Hello everyone, welcome back to my playlist on how to build out a CCIE CCMP collaboration lab. In this one, we're going to be doing DNS and DHCP. We're nearing the end of the configurations for the Windows server, and we'll be starting on the configurations for the actual unified communications devices here pretty soon. Before we can move forward, I actually need to go back into server manager because I need to enable DHCP. So once this is done loading, we'll be able to click on add roles and features. This is something we've talked about a number of times. So I'll go ahead and pause the recording again until it's ready. This is now ready. So we'll click on add features and roles or roles and features. We'll, we'll choose the role based option. This is my only server. So I'll move forward with that and we'll do DHCP server. Click add features on my router where this where this server is getting the DHCP from, I've already assigned it to the MAC address of this server. So I don't need to worry about this. It would be better if I actually went in and put the static IP address. So I may do that later. But I know that this particular server won't get a different IP address because the DHCP server is mapping it directly to this server's MAC address. Go ahead and hit next. I'll hit next again. Again, restart if necessary install. Now I'll pause this recording until everything is ready. The installation succeeded and we have to complete the DHCP configuration. I'll use my administrator's credentials as the credentials to authorize this as a DHCP server. It lets me know here that the creating security groups is done and authorizing DHCP server is done as well. So I'll go ahead and close this out. If we make our way back to the server manager dashboard, we can see DHCP is here now as an option. I'll close this. And if we click on it, it opens up and lets us see everything is, is good here. Also, if we close that out and we go over to Windows Administrative Tools, we now have DHCP as an option here. Now we can actually get into doing the DNS configurations and the DHCP configurations of this video as well. I'm going to start off with DNS. We'll click on this and then we'll do reverse lookup zones. I'll say new zone. Next, it will be a primary zone. I will do it to all DNS servers running on the domain controllers in this domain. It's going to be IPv4. And now I have to put in the network ID. So what I have to reference is my document here that has all the different IP addresses, the VLAN IDs, the VLAN names or network names, whatever you want to call them. The first entry I'm going to make is going to be for my CUCM publisher, which is going to be at headquarters. So I put in here 192.168.110. We'll hit next and I'll do both non-secure and secure dynamic updates. That's because this is in my lab environment, I'm not too concerned about the security that I would be concerned about in a production environment. At this point, I'll make a forward lookup zone or I'll go to my forward lookup zone and I'll make a new host here. The name I'm going to give it is HQCUCM pub. You can see the fully qualified domain name here. I want to paste in the subnet that this is going to go on to which is our 192.168.110. I'll give it an IP address of five. I want to create an associated pointer record with this, which will go into the reverse lookup zones. We'll say add host. Now, if I refresh this, we can see my HQCUCM pub is here. And we should also have a ref a, um, reverse lookup zone entry over here, our, our pointer, which we do. I'm going to do the same thing for my I am in presence server now at headquarters. And also at headquarters, I'm going to have an expressway C and an expressway E for MRA. I'll go ahead and make those entries as well right now. While I do that though, I'm going to pause the recording. I now have some entries for my Expressways, my Unity Connection Publisher, my HQCUCM Publisher, as well as my IMMP Publisher. And we should be able to go in here to command line and do NS 
lookup, we'll do HQCUC pub. And you can see I get back the IP address and the name that I'm looking for. I do have other devices that I need to add, but I'm probably not going to add those until the time comes down the road when I have to deal with those particular devices or particular sites. Now with DNS out of the way, we'll close this. We'll close DNS as well, and we'll hop into the DHCP setup. I'll expand this, and for the IPv4, I'm going to set up a new scope. And I'll call this scope name HQ Voice VLAN. We now have to put in the start IP address and the end IP address as well as the length and subnet mask. Referencing the document that we had up earlier, we can see that the HQ voice VLAN is going to have 192.168.111.0 and it's a slash 24. Now I want to reserve some of the IP addresses for infrastructure or whatever else I want it to be. I'm not going to have too many phones in my home lab. So having 80 available addresses should be good, 80 or so. Anything that's 19 or below will not be handed out by this DHCP server for this scope. Anything that's above 100 won't be handed out either. We'll hit next. At this point, I can say explicitly, do not give out these particular IP addresses or these particular um, ranges of IP addresses, but I kind of already did that on the first screen. Now I'll just click next and I'll leave this lease duration to its default. I'm not too concerned about that. At this point, I can configure D, uh, the DHCP options, which will be things like the TFTP server option 150 or the, the default gateway. Maybe I can put in the domain name, the DNS servers, the NTP servers, all sorts of things that I can put into this options. But I'm not going to do it right now because I think it will actually be of more value to cover it later when it's needed. Then I can show how something is reliant on the DHCP options, and then we can configure it and show how it's actually applied when it's needed. We'll click next now, and I'll click finish. The last thing for me to do here is to activate it. And if we go back up to this section, you can see the status is active. Not only do I need to do this for the HQ voice VLAN, but I'll have to do this for the HQ data VLAN and also the voice and data VLANs for the other sites as well. But just seeing how to do it here is good enough. So I'll do those configurations without putting them into the video. I think this one does it for now, and I'll see you in the next video.